Hello, welcome to the video on solving linear inequalities. This will be a lesson on this topic. Let's take a look at our objectives for this video. I'm going to go ahead and define what linear inequalities are, and then we're going to take a look at the graphs. Then we'll go ahead and check to see if a number is a solution to an inequality. And then lastly, we're going to learn how to solve linear inequalities. And by the way, I just want to mention that um, solving linear inequalities is very, very much um, like solving an equation. So you need to know how to uh, solve linear equations of mass stat. If not, you're probably going to have a tougher time picking up on uh, some of the um, concepts I'm going to talk about here. So please go back and review um, equations if you're not uh, confident. So let's go ahead right to it. So what are linear inequalities? Well, in the simplest term, if you have a mathematical sentence or expression, let's say x plus 1 is greater than uh, 13, for example, and in that expression you have one of these symbols, okay, and one of these symbols here, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. If you have one of those symbols contained in some sort of mathematical expression, we call this a sentence, you have yourself an inequality, all right? Now, what does it mean? Okay, well, before we talk about exactly what it means, let's just make sure you know the symbols. I'm sure that um, you're probably familiar, most of you are familiar with inequalities and have a basic sense, but let's just review. This particular one, the first one is the less than, okay? The next one is the less than, equal to, then we have the greater than, greater than, equal to, and not equal to. Okay, one way you can uh, remember the difference between the less than and greater than is that the less than looks kind of like an L. All right, so this particular one is the less than, not this one. Okay, sometimes students confuse that. But in another way, well, inequalities, what they're basically doing is comparing two quantities. They're just saying one side of the comparison. Let's do this here. I have a quantity here and a quantity here. All right, so let's say I have 50 and I have 40. Okay. And I have two different quantities. If I want to compare them, how can I compare these two? All right. Well, I can say that, well, 50 is greater than 40. Okay. That's clear. So if I want to say 50 is greater than 40, I would use that symbol. All right. Now, what if I had two amounts? Let's say x is greater than 40. Okay. So what I'm saying is some number x is greater than 40. Now that x could represent 50, like we just showed in our previous example, or it could represent 60 or a thousand or a million. We don't know. So one of the main things that I want you to remember about inequalities is that inequalities have any an infinite number, any number of, of values that will will satisfy the comparison. So if I said give me a number that is greater than 40, you can give me all kinds of numbers and it would be correct, okay? One number obviously you couldn't give me would be like, say, for example, 15. Okay, 15 is not greater than 40. So that's, that's not a valid comparison. But basically, um, inequalities are just comparing or giving you some sort of comparison between two quantities, okay, on the left and the right. And we can compare numbers by saying one is less than the other or maybe you know, one is less than or possibly equal to the other. And then we have the greater than or greater to or equal to and then not equal to. All right. So that's a basic, hopefully got a basic sense of what inequalities are. So let's talk about here how to graph an inequality. Now if you recall, let's take a look at this first one here, x is greater than 3. I'm comparing the left hand side with the right hand side. All right. I'm saying some number is greater than 3. All right. So how many numbers are greater than 3? Well, there's all kinds of numbers greater than 3. Matter of fact, there's an infinite amount of numbers that are greater than 3. So all those numbers that are greater than 3 are the answer, okay, or would, would fit in, in here. There would be a fair representation of x. It would, be, it would make this statement true. Okay, now if you recall, in a solution, in an equation, the number that equals the left-hand side that equals the right-hand side, for example, is what the solution is, okay, whatever that value, whatever that value that makes the equation true. Same thing in inequalities, okay? So as long as I have any number that is, in fact, greater than 3, we would call that number a solution. So, for example, if I let x equals to 4 and I plugged it in here, okay, I would have the inequality 4 is greater than 3, would I not? 
Okay, and that's a true statement. So therefore, four is one of the answers to this inequality. But four is not the only answer. Okay, so is five. Right, so because five in fact is greater than three. So we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Instead of trying to list the answers to an inequality by saying, okay, x is equal to 4, x is, can be equal to 5, x can be equal to 6, x can be equal to 7, and so forth, okay, and try to list all the infinite amount of numbers that would make this true, what we want to do is just go ahead and show that on a graph, all right? So I know I took a little bit of time explaining why it's important that we graph the solutions to inequalities, but hopefully you understand now is that there is no one exact solution to an inequality, okay? There's an infinite amount. So therefore, we, we want to know how to express those solutions by using a graph, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and learn how to do this. It's actually pretty simple. So the first one is all x is greater than 3. So how do we graph something like that? All right, so here's the procedure. First thing is you're going to go to the number, okay? In this case, it's 3. So let's go to 3 in the number line. 1, 2, 3. So go to the number and draw a circle around its uh, coordinate on the number line, just like that, an open circle. All right, now, step two is to ask yourself, where are all the numbers in relation to three? Where are all the numbers that are greater than three? Okay, and when you're looking at three, where are all those numbers located at on the number line? Okay, remember four, five, all these numbers to the right of three, okay, are, worth, are greater than three. All right, now this might seem totally obvious, but sometimes people have to think, think this through. So knowing that all the numbers that are greater than 3 are to the right of 3, we're going to just simply draw an arrow, just like this, okay, extending from the circle all the way out to the right, and there you go. You just go ahead, you just graphed the solution, okay, to x is greater than 3. It's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and try the next problem, right, same procedure. Just start with two, and we would say.